Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Lazy Programmer Show. In this video, I want to talk about one major pitfall for web, mobile, and backend developers who want to get into machine learning. Many of you don't know this, but I actually spent a long time in the industry working on backend development and big data processing, in addition to, of course, doing data science. I've also spent a bit of time doing front end development as necessary for my own sites although this field is now a lot more expansive than it used to be. I've even spent some time doing mobile development on the side. Now, from this position, I've come to learn all of the different kinds of approaches taken by developers who come from these subfields of software development, so I know and I can empathize with how each of them thinks. The thing is, if you try and group machine learning in with these other groups, you'll find that machine learning is somewhat of a black sheep amongst them. People often think, well, React Native is coding, iOS is coding, and machine learning is also coding. I am a coder, therefore I can do well if I transition to machine learning, and surely my background in development will be beneficial. Unfortunately, this is where many developers go wrong. Before we continue on with this lecture, just a short reminder that we are already two weeks into the month-long VIP sale of my latest course on PyTorch. After releasing the leading TensorFlow 2 course on Udemy, I thought it would be an excellent idea to teach PyTorch 2, the next up-and-coming major deep learning library. In fact, many indicators suggest that this era is already here. Companies like OpenAI and Apple have switched to PyTorch, and Facebook, who is now the primary developer of PyTorch, obviously uses it as well to serve their billions of users. Today, most research papers are implemented in PyTorch, so I think the evidence is clear where the field of deep learning is going. Use the link in the description below to get your copy of the VIP version of PyTorch today. Remember that the VIP version contains entire sections of material that will not be available in the non-VIP version of the course. This course contains everything, from the basics like ANNs, CNNs, and RNNs, all the way up to transfer learning, recommender systems, GANs, NLP, facial recognition, and building a stock trading bot using deep Q learning. Again, these coupons expire in a month, and we're already two weeks in, so get your copy today. So let's get back to why it's not a good idea, if you come from a background in a web, mobile, or backend development, to assume that you will fare okay when it comes to machine learning. This is especially true if you are a developer who thinks more in terms of building systems out of APIs, as opposed to a developer who thinks more algorithmically. If one of your main mantras is, don't roll your own whatever, then this is probably you. Now, don't get me wrong, this mantra certainly has its place. Obviously, you don't want to build your own functions for sorting or SSL, as that would be very silly. However, I find that many modern developers who have problems learning machine learning fall more on the side of using APIs instead of those who think algorithmically. So that being said, what are the pitfalls that these developers face when trying to learn machine learning? To summarize, here are the main points. Firstly, they assume that to learn machine learning is to learn how to use APIs that do machine learning under the hood. Now that's quite silly. That's like saying I've learned cryptography because I know how to encrypt my communications using HTTPS. Well, no. Just as the everyday web user typically does not know cryptography, so too, a user of IBM's or Microsoft's cloud APIs does not know anything about machine learning. Second, in the process of learning machine learning, students sometimes think they're going to be taken through some kind of guided project, kind of like how you would build a website. Maybe you start with some static pages, then you create your user table, then you create your login form, and so on and so forth. Machine learning algorithms don't really work that way. So let's break down each of these points. The first point is, it is incorrect to think of machine learning as using APIs. Someone once tried to tell me, but you don't need to become a mechanical engineer to learn how to drive a car. Well, that much is obvious, but you're getting your roles confused. In order to build a car, you need to be a mechanical engineer, but you don't sign up for a course on how cars work if all you want to do is learn how to drive. If you want to learn how to drive, you sign up for a driving school. Similarly, if all you want to do is use machine learning, go out and buy yourself an iPhone. You will be using machine learning every time you talk to Siri. However, I think most sane people understand at least this difference between using machine learning and being an actual machine learning engineer. 
Now that example was a bit extreme, but let's go one layer deeper and talk about students who think learning machine learning is all about using APIs. Here's a random page I picked out from one of the most famous machine learning books of all time, Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning by Christopher Bishop. One astounding characteristic of this book is that it does not contain any code at all. Would anyone argue that this book is not about machine learning? I don't think any student has enough guts to say that one of the most famous machine learning books of all time is not actually about machine learning. Well, if you do, then you're welcome to let me know in the comments. Now, one might object and say, why not pick a more modern book, such as the Deep Learning book by Ian Goodfellow, the inventor of GANs? Well, sure, if you insist, let's go try that book. Here's a random page from Ian Goodfellow's Deep Learning book. Uh-oh, what do we see? We see that, yet again, there is actually zero code in this book. And again, I think you would be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't think this book is about machine learning. Personally, I think it's very important to learn how to implement machine learning algorithms and not just study the math. So if you take one of my courses, you will always get at least 50% code, if not more. It's one of the best ways to learn about how a machine learning algorithm works. Believe me, and I'm speaking from experience, after looking at some equations, your understanding may be at about 20%, but after implementing the model, your understanding will be at 80%. As I've been saying for the past five years, if you can't implement it, then you don't understand it. I recently found out that everyone's most beloved physicist, Richard Feynman, said a very similar thing. Importantly, understand that using scikit-learn does not count as implementation. If you are a developer at any level of competence, you should not need help to use scikit-learn. If you're trying to learn machine learning and you think you need to take a 20-hour course to learn scikit-learn, you should take this as a sign that you are probably not ready for machine learning. The second point is an interesting one, which I hadn't thought about until recently. Many developers out there have gone through boot camps, whether live or online, and they often mistakenly believe that after three months of learning the basics of some stack of technologies, that they know what software engineering is all about. Let's remember what boot camps are really for. They were designed to teach you very surface level topics, the bare minimum so that you can be a good worker bee. Hopefully, one day you strive to attain a deeper level of understanding. Now, this is not a knock on boot camps at all. I think live boot camps can be a great way to learn about a new technology. Now, online courses that put boot camp in the title, that's another story. In any case, I myself have gone through various tutorials and courses in order to learn new technologies for development. These are often organized in step-by-step -step projects. As an example of this, the first step might be to simply initialize the project and run your server locally. At each step of the way, you will do something meaningful and you will be able to observe the result. The app will do something that it wasn't able to do before. After running your server locally, you will be able to visit your app in the browser. Maybe it'll say something like, hello world. Your next step might be to replace the default page with your own homepage. So instead of hello world, now it says my microblogging app. There will be many more such steps along the way. You'll create a user table. You'll add authentication. You'll create signup and login forms. You'll push your app to production. You'll run a database migration. There are many, many such steps that will produce meaningful output. When you're building an app, a step-by-step -step process makes complete sense. In fact, I find this process very enjoyable. If you're a developer, making things is fun. However, realize that machine learning is not like that. If you're implementing a machine learning algorithm, there are no steps to produce intermediate outputs. As an example, consider this short algorithm from a famous paper on hidden Markov models. You might think, this doesn't seem like much, it's just a few equations. Of course, you would be wrong. The actual code to implement this algorithm confuses many beginners. But it's important to realize, there are no steps here. You can't implement one equation and not the others, and expect to see any kind of meaningful output. You can't implement the equations partially, and expect to see any kind of meaningful output. So hopefully this video answered your questions on what the major pitfalls are for web, mobile, and backend developers who want to get into machine learning. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next lecture.